Good morning, good morning. And almost Merry Christmas, we're getting there. All right, let's see, uh, Mr. Bell's got the invocation, I think he's got somebody coming in, and then we'll do the pledge, I've got that, then we'll do the organization, now we'll turn it over to Mr. Parker right at that point. Approval minutes, there's any uh, adjustment to the agenda? Uh, I guess so, we do have one addition uh, we would like to add. Um, it is the adding of two law firms uh, to uh, be approved for to do the legal work for the uh, HMGP project for the CDBG. Um, so that's for the property acquisition. So um, we've sent out requests for proposals. Uh, these two firms have agreed to do it as well. So this will help with our pool of attorneys and surveyors uh, as we start the buyout program. So, so we don't need one firm, we're going to need two. We're going to multi we have multiple firms. We have multiple teams. No, okay. So the, the quicker we have multiple teams, uh, the quicker the uh, process will go. I don't see any need to uh, just put it under wrong um, yes, yes, sir. Put it as number six. Yes, sir. But that's the only thing I have this morning. Okay. Then they put the commissioners. Okay. All right, then we'll have public comments, and we do have some appointments. Yes. And uh, any exclusions, we've been through those, and they look okay, don't they? Yes, sir. And then we got this subdivision plat for Goose Creek. You want to go ahead and go over that there, Barry? You want to go over the budget minutes first? I, I am so sorry. <laughs> Pushing things, pushing things right along, Anna. You were going to make her day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Budget amendments. Well, I'm sorry. Either way you go, Steve, we only have two on the, um, the meeting today. Number 185 is for the detention center. This is budget is needed to reallocate $6,000 from kitchen supplies and maintenance and repairs equipment. Issues with the, the security equipment for the jail doors and related warranty. It was prompted in the county to seek an amendment in service. This also required purchase of the door security equipment and related maintenance fees. Is that the new jail or the old jail? Or don't you know? I did not know that for certain. I believe uh, we've had uh, camera issues with the new jail, but lock issues with the old jail. <laughs> okay. and Better to fix the locks. Yes, sir. Right. for sheriff's programs and supplies. These monies are revenues received from calendar sales and donations for the sheriff's office to be used within the sheriff's office budget for special program materials. All right, any questions? Moving right along, Barry. All right, good morning. The subdivision this morning is Goose Creek Phase 6. It is a preliminary plat. Uh, the property is owned by Randy and Marty McCall. There's 20, 29 lots on 22 acres. Um, it is on Noriam Road, actually just north of the existing Goose Creek, if you're familiar with that subdivision. It'll actually tie into Goose Creek. Um, there'll be a tie-in there into a stub out that's already <coughs> existing, and there'll also be a direct access onto Noriam Road. Um, the average lot size is about 26,000 square feet, 26,119 specifically. Uh, the planning board has reviewed the preliminary plat and recommends approval. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Have, have, you had any, um, have you had any complaints from any of the residents <coughs> around this I have not. I haven't heard from any neighbors. Okay. I had I had one that's concerned about um, the connecting road from the new part to the old part, right. um, especially on the Noam Road front. Um, is there going to be any kind of buffers or anything uh, from these other properties that's not part of the subdivision? Are there going to be any buffers, or is it just going to be a, a, a backyard backup like normal? Yeah, there, there's no buffer that's proposed on the plat. It'll just back up through the lots that are already there. I would, I would like, I'd like for us to, to look at um, the possibility of, of adding a buffer along those um, two properties up on the front that um, border Noam Road um, for 
privacy for existing residents. Right. And the applicant is here, um, and um, I don't want to speak for the applicant, but the applicant is here and may be willing to entertain that. If I'm looking, if I'm not, Mr. Chair, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> if I'm looking at this plat, now this little bitty plat, and my we readers are kind of <laughs> kicking in this morning, but anyway, it appears as if there's a stormwater <coughs> right there on the property line between the existing Butts property. Is that Butts? Right, that's right. Um, and then it says it's a commercial area. What is that commercial? It's a um, common area. Um, it's going to be a common area. Oh, it's a common area. Yeah, common area that stays undeveloped other than if there's a stormwater pond that's needed. There'll be a stormwater pond in there, and then that'll be dedicated over to a homeowners association. Barry. Yes, sir. Could you take your point and go over there to this? I can't read it. See, I can't see it. And point to I, Just show us what you're talking about. It's actually over Okay. And there, here's the um, Butts property, Butts Lunch here. Uh, and you said common area here, but a storm, uh, potential stormwater basin in this common area. Well, uh, the reason I bring that up is I don't know how you can be a, build a berm if you're having a uh, retention. Is that a retention pond? It would be. And, and it, again, this is a preliminary. So, you know, things could be shifted, I'm sure, slightly That's in true. there at this point. That's true. Yes, the, I, the, the issue is not, is not the area beside of the common area. The issue is, is the, the, the <coughs> subdivision backside, I call it, where those properties connect on, on what I call the backyard part. That common area is really, I don't see how you can put a berm there. I don't think it's necessary. But I don't. It doesn't have to be a berm. It can be um, uh, trees, right? What is right. That? Right. It does not have to be a berm. No. You know, it doesn't have to be a berm. But right. you know, obviously, Mr. Chair. Yes. I, I think it helped it helped clarify this up. Uh, th this <clears throat> this section six had been farmland all my life. What Mr. Mayo is talking about, that is two existing properties that has got residents on it that had been there for years and years. That's right. And and they just wanting some a little bit of buffer of some kind. Yeah. It's 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 that's 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 where we're coming to is is those residents that have been there for years and years, you know, they they've always had farm land right? and now they're gonna be in a subdivision. And they just, uh, they're just seeking a little bit of, of some type of buffer the way I understand it. Uh, That's correct. Okay. Yes, you're right. Just to clear that up. Can you out that he's talking about? Because I, I don't know which one you're talking yeah. about. Th them two. They were okay. They, they, those houses have been there for years. They okay. have. They were there way before. And there's a concern. So what you're saying, y'all want a buffer in the backyard? Yeah, across the yeah. <clears throat> um, Well, um, if you will, go back to that map there, if you will, Barry. Um, actually, behind the Ivy property, what is that triangular piece there? Uh, I mean, not triangular, but uh, Rect rectangular. <laughs> yes, that one there. That's a, um, that's a proposed lot. lot that is a lot. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's what that is. For a house to be put on? Yes, sir. And so the issue is that they want to put a buffer between those two, I guess, those two front, large front pieces in the subdivision. That, that's that's what I'm. Is it? Here. And, and just out of my curiosity, what kind of housing and what kind of landscaping is, is it? I guess I'm wondering: is it is that subdivision going to be offensive looking? Because I mean, last time we talked about a buffer, we. Uh, it was the solar fields, you know, that's right. that's a natural. Right. But I was just curious if there's yeah. something about that subdivision that's gonna be unattractive. No. Or from, it's just it from what I understand. Some privacy be, based on strangers. Right. Based on strangers. It, it'll be a um uh from what I understand a site built subdivision like the other one. 
Um, so it's really just you know a neighbor issue, I guess you could say, in privacy. What do you think? The, what do you think the uh, the typical house over there? What's the square footage? What does it cost? Hmm. At this point, I'm not sure exactly. Um, that hasn't been disclosed. Um, but <coughs> I would have to guess, and again, it's a guess that it would be compatible with the area. But um, but there again, that information has not been disclosed at this point, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Don't hold me to it, but my understanding is, uh, and I don't have anything to justify this other than what I've heard, is that these these homes may be majority patio home. I'm not I'm not positive, but it really doesn't matter. The key the key is is that there needs to be, and, one, and Commissioner Acock is correct. Uh, there, there needs to be a, a buffer like trees or something like that because of the extra road that's coming in through the subdivision. It's going right. to be a lot of traffic coming through there. Right. Uh, and and these, two, these two residences up on the front that were just pointed out, uh, they have been there for many, many years. And they're just asking... They're just asking for uh, some some type of privacy, that's, and that's not unusual. Well, I, Mr. Chairman, actually, I think it is a little unusual because if you've got common usage, what you got residents. I don't know of any time that we have gone in when we had the same usage of the land and actually put in a requirement that you put a buffer in. I, I, I'm not aware. That, that's right. As far as I can understand, that's the case. The ordinance doesn't specifically require a buffer in a situation like this. Um, usually, if it's unlike or dissimilar uses, you know, that's typically where you see that. Like was mentioned with the solar farm and a residential, you know, those type of things. Um, but uh, residential to residential, typically, we don't see buffers between those. I, I, w I would just ask that. Um, and you're right, it, it would be up to the developer, but I would ask that we uh, go back and, and ask, the, ask the developer and confront them with this concern and just see what they say. Right. I know both of those developers, so I'll yes. be honest with you, I don't think it would be a problem, but I, you know, I would recommend that we go back and, and just ask the question. Yeah, and we could do that. And a representative of the developer is here and has heard this discussion as well. Yeah, uh, and so um, I can speak with him after the meeting as well. But uh, but he's he's heard the concerns, and I'm sure he'll go back and I'll ask him to do that as well too. Because this is a preliminary anyway, so it it's is. not a final plan. So That's right. we got time to do that. Well, right. Let, let me ask Mr. Mills, and I'm, I'm I'm at a loss. When you say it's a patio home, I'm I'm not familiar with that. But how's that different from just a regular? Yeah, uh, I don't know size that size and so forth and so on. Yeah, I don't believe there'll be actual patio homes. Um, what a lot of homes are going to now are um, they no longer have crawl spaces. They're on slabs, and that could be what it is. Like Goose Creek, uh, yeah. Goose Creek, but um, Gander Lake, for example, out yeah. on uh, Pikeville Princeton Road. Right. That tends to be the model that um, that homes are going to nowadays in subdivisions. So that that's what I'm guessing that that may be referencing is. But my understanding and, is is that. Um, Mr. Camardi, is that the this is has nothing to do with the type of homes that are being built. This well, has to what, do with with existing homes as far as privacy. Okay, I, and I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not against what those folks want. Let me preface that. What I'm looking for is is there something about this that we need to be watching down the road for other developments that may have some similar. If that cropped up again, <coughs> I would want us to have some notes somewhere that. It, we would treat the next situation like, and that is my concern. Yeah, you're, you're it's not like we're going it, here. I mean, it, not it that I have a thing we can in doing that. Have Barry take back to the planning board and relook at the ordinance and see I'm, what I'm situation. I'm not asking to mandate it. The only thing I'm asking is just go back and check. It's right. up to develop and just say yeah. And in a lot of situations, you know, in some situations, developer may be willing to do so. Um, and so that's what we can do is we can ask the developer if he would actually, if he would be interested or be willing to put in something there, basically to be a good neighbor, you know, that's to a way. As long as there's a request, I got no yep. problem with it. We can right. do that. That's what I'm asking. I'm a agree. request. A request only. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Well, and sometimes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
based upon the size of the homes and how they're built and so forth and so on. We all know that that, that has some impact on uh, the availability of those homes for uh, folk. So, right. you know, there's, there's, if, it's, if it's on a slab, I don't know that that's a drawback. No. But um, for more information, because I, right. I, I think we, and it's not, Ms. Mayor, it's not about those privacy, and they want privacy and it's deserving, fine. Right. But I would want us to know that we were going to do something with this one, and down the road, you wouldn't be put in a position. Right. Did this then, we are doing this now, we should, you know, right. that kind of thing. Right. Uh, just, Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just check with the developer and, and, and ask and see, can you get it worked out? We can do it. But, but one of the biggest concerns that's got nothing to do with developer or the people that own the property is this is going to put another mobile classroom at Northwest Elementary School. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least one. That, that you are exactly right. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Yes, I agree. Right. Let's move on. <laughs> Well, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point, I think. Mr. Hunt, uh, do you want to talk about the national motto? Um, <laughs> yes, sir. The chairman's moving on. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, we do have a resolution in front of us uh, that has been recommended um, uh, to place the In God We Trust on our courthouse. Uh, this is a group that comes from Davidson County. Uh, they go across the state and they put up In God We Trust for free. Uh, on buildings, and they can also put it here in our commissioner's chambers. If you know the commissioner's like, we can put it in the back there. Uh, but it is a very common resolution. Multiple, multiple counties and municipalities across the state have agreed to do this at no cost to us. Correct. At no cost. Um, uh, the question is, do we? Would you like to see in God we trust with, here in the um, commissioner's chambers? I think that would be great. So, uh, so uh, that motion. But they will, put, they will put, put it, it will be pl aesthetically pleasing, you know, and meet uh, on the courthouse. But what they'll also do, you know, at our request on the courthouse. You'll always give us some say so on how it looks. We, yes, we have say, say so, yes, sir. Okay, just want to be and, sure. Yep. And this is a group coming from where? Davidson County. Uh, <coughs> they have gone, uh, raised money and gone across the state um, with multiple municipalities and multiple counties. Um, putting in God we trust on uh, public uh, facilities. Right. Yeah, they've been doing this for quite a few years, I believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes I can't help but wonder when something new is thought of, <coughs> why it hadn't been thought of before. Well, they've been around. A done, a done. Yeah. Well, 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 no, a done by our in county they church groups or. Someone, and I think part of it's the money cost uh, of putting the signage up because some of it's not cheap. Um, when I was in Alamance County, the same group came and we put it on. We had two courthouses and we put on two courthouses. We put it in the commissioner's chamber. They were great to work with. They really were. Um, but it was a very positive thing. We probably did that five, six years ago in Alamance. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, just for information. As um, <coughs> far as I know, all of the fire departments in Wayne County, the volunteer fire departments, has already put that slogan on the windshields of all of their equipment. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I think, you know, I, I think this is great. Is everybody good? Yep. yep. Okay. <coughs> Moving on. And the resolution for the support of juvenile crime prevention? It, just a resolution in support of additional funding from the state. And I see Mr. Dustin is here. Yes. You care to expand on it, Annie? Um, certainly, Commissioner Um Briefly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the point here, gentlemen, is, and good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, the point here is that the state allots funds to JCPC. The county distributes them through our JCPC organization. That allotment's been the same since 2009. Uh, here in Wayne County, um, we included some statistics in this resolution. This is something that's been passed around statewide, and all counties are being asked to support this to send to the legislature. Uh, we added in statistics from Wayne County of what we're facing right now and the problems that we have. 
and the fact that we simply do not have enough in that state allotment to address the needs we have right now and we're about to receive 16 and 17 year olds into the juvenile system and we don't have any additional money uh, allocated if the 2019-2020 budget cycle comes through from the legislature and there is not an increase that'll be 10 years uh, that we have not seen an increase in funding for jcpc statewide that you have before you is a little different from what he's discussing. Oh, okay. Right. I, I think what what the reason why we had to, we had a request from the state, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the one we put in the agenda packet first. So, okay. So yeah, the, the one from the state is just was just a, a boilerplate. Um, right. You know, asking the legislature to support, but our JCPC wanted to include specifically for our purposes what we're facing, things like. Um, one of the statistics we have in here is that over 23% of juveniles assessed in Wayne County either self-identify as a gang member or are known to associate with gang members. That's three times the state average, and that statistic has doubled since 2014. Um, and those are, and, and across the board, we're seeing those kind of numbers in our juvenile system. Um, I'll tell you that, as in my experience as a defense attorney, and then also through my work on the JCPC, um, we tend to, and I think our juvenile office does a great job of not bringing the low-level offenders into the court system, addressing them through other means. Um, and what we're seeing in our court system are the more severe, the more high-risk, the more high-needs juveniles, uh, which is ultimately how the system should work. But it also means we've got to have the ability to address those issues. So, certainly, if there are any questions of But this supports the same idea, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, okay. Right. Got a okay. Right. Questions? So, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. what it sound like if you are you're requesting an increase based upon a projection and an assumption that the state is not going to fund what they mandated? Yes, sir. Um, when the have, have, well, just a minute. Have you had direct conversation with a state level agency to find out if there's anything in the pipeline or through one of our legislators from the area, is there anything in the pipeline that would cause you to believe that there wouldn't be funding? Well, sir, I'll say that I have not directly had any contact um, with any of the higher level in the state legislature well, in regards who, to this. Who, um, maybe other, I'm at a loss. Who's up the line of, who's in the county up the line of chain that would make that kind of a inquiry. We, we will send this to our local resolution to our local de delegation as well and make them aware <coughs> of uh, the concern that you know that is statewide but also we have here locally with JCPC funding. I'm not I'm not against any increase categorically yes, but uh, as I look about over the last day or two what I've seen Raleigh talking about spending money in I would want us to make a request for this to be funded, since it seemed to be a move in Raleigh to spend money on a lot of different things. Yes, sir, I understand. The, the reason that this came about, um, when the Raise the Age legislation passed as part of the budget amendments um, two years ago, in that process, they did include funding for increased number of juvenile court counselors statewide, and they also provided funding for building a detention facility uh, in Rockingham County to house juveniles, a specific juvenile detention facility. Um, and they did say, and they, they gave overtures, that there would be additional funding for prevention-based programs like JCPC. However, that piece of the puzzle has not fallen into place. And December 1, 2019 is when that legislation takes effect. And we still have not seen that increase in allocation. We've not seen any, and in fact, I've not seen any legislation that's been proposed to provide that increase. And so that's why uh, this came about. It's just as a somewhat gentle reminder you said you were going to do this. Now it's time to get it done. Last thing. So this resolution is for us to advocate for you to get money from Raleigh, not for us to directly fund you. So right. Yes, sir. No. All right. This all right. is completely <laughs> state. This is completely state funding and, and uh, all right. Okay. So uh, local funding. Now, if I may, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I, I wanted to say this to you because I do understand funding is an important topic when we discuss things. This resolution is not the purpose is not for the purpose of asking the commissioners for money. Okay. It is not. However, I will say as the vice chairman of JCPC, <laughs> since you opened um, the door, <laughs> since you opened the door, thank you, Mr. Cromarty. Uh, as the vice chairman of JCPC, it's my responsibility to advocate for the youth of Wayne County. 
if the state does not increase their allocation and does not make moves to increase their allocation, I will tell you that I will be back um, to ask you uh, through formal process and do whatever I can to advocate for the JCPC programs that we have and the youth of Wayne County to ask you to provide some money to help us as well. Um, this past year we had over $400,000 in requests and we only had 330000 to a lot. Uh, that meant we had to cut existing programs, we had to shift things around to be able to provide the services that we needed and the services that Wayne County needs. And so if we can't get it from the legislature, I'm going to do everything I can to get it from you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think the, the main thing that we need to get the message to Raleigh is, uh, and I think you'll agree, it's, it's cheaper to try to keep them out of incarceration than, than keep them in incarceration. I mean, and the, the goal is, is, is to try to help the youth and, and, and lead them in the right direction. <laughs> so, but the current numbers is it costs the county $125 a day to send a juvenile to detention, and it costs approximately $140,000 a year to send a juvenile to a youth development center. Um, to youth and youth development center is our entire budget at JCPC. We'd rather have them at Wayne Community College in, than in... Yes, sir, Mr. Acock. Education is everything. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. It, is Blit B out of order if I have to go back to the Goose Creek plaque? I've omitted a question that I needed to ask. While Barry's here. It's a good thing he came back. Yeah. I, thank you. I appreciate it. I want I wanted to get a, a clarification, Barry. There, there is a HOA in the subdivision? Right. There will be for, um, for this subdivision, there will be an HOA. Okay. It goes to my next question. The common area, is it going to be a play area for kids? Is this going to have places, you know, swings and slides and this kind of thing in the common area? No, no. The common area they're setting aside primarily for the purpose of stormwater management for any future stormwater ponds. Um, and then whatever's left in those areas will just be open. It's open space, I guess you could say. Okay, that answered my question because I'm, I'm in a subdivision. We have a common area, but it's full of swings and so forth. Right. And in that case, you would need a fence of some type, right. you know, to, right. along the property line. So thank you. Right. I appreciate you. Well, mm -hmm. since we have Barry back up, I just want to ask one quick one. Sure. Uh, streets and so forth and so on. Uh, well, this subdivision it, is. It, have we injected anything into our regulation stuff for us? What it's going to ensure that those streets are paved and turned over to the state in an appropriate manner, and down the road somebody won't have to be trying to figure out. We do the potholes. Yep, the ordinance does require one that it be paved, of course, and that it be paved to DOT standards. Um, and with that, we require a built to standards letter now from DOT, where DOT will actually go out there up front and inspect the streets to make sure that they're built to DOT standards. What we've seen in the past um, is that you can have streets paved, you can label them on the plat as public, and DOT will sign a plat that says that the streets are designed to their standards. But there was really nothing that made sure that they were actually built up front to the standard. So you were seeing them deteriorate quickly because they were, um, the initial construction wasn't up to par. So we're trying to get ahead of that. We required this built standards letter to make sure that it does up front meet those standards. So in other words, the developer is going to pave the streets and then DOT is going to come out and certify that it's correct. That's right. Fully blown, don't, to all of their standards. That's right. But, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. it's still up to the developer to apply right. to the DOT? It is. The developer would still have to apply to DOT. DOT cannot take over a street when it's first paved. Um, there's requirements <coughs> that there has to be a certain number of homes on the street and have to be a certain number of occupied homes on the street before DOT can take it over. So that's why you kind of see that gap between construction and when they're taking over is that um, that you have to get a certain number of residents there living there before DOT will even entertain a petition. Well, one of the biggest issues was and is is that during construction, do we have anything in place that when a driveway tile was put in that it's that we're sure it's put into DOT specs because that's been the big issue in these older subdivisions. We, we, we're crossing a, bro a, a bridge here so we've been crossed. All of this is in the county of uh, regulations. Now. I know, but if it's not I mean, being in the older done. subdivisions, it won't. But but everything yeah. that's, that goes to, before the planning board now, all these restrictions and, and, and guidelines and requirements is, is is in it. 
about. I, well, I understand, but if it's not followed through, that's what I'm interested in. It's on, if it's on the books and it's not being followed through, right. the DOT is not going to take over that subdivision if the driveway tile is not correct. Right. And um, right. And we do um, we do require performance bonds. Performance. Yeah, we do require bonds, and we do have some um, things in our ordinance that address. Um, standards like our stormwater ordinance with the flow of water through ditches that helps with those things now so like you said some of the older subdivisions before those stands were in place that we're now trying to go back and look at there there are some problems but I feel like what we have in place now between stormwater and our core, current ordinance and DOT's initial looking at it is going to really help in the future with a lot of these thank you well, that's yeah, what yeah. I needed to hear thank well, you Barry, one last thing it sounds like Based upon the fact there's got to be a certain number of homes on the street and so forth and so on. And no one can guess how quickly some developers are going to get the houses. So there's still a gap in there, right. isn't it? Because Serious. those streets could be aged before that, before you hit that mark as the number of houses that need to be on the street. That's right. And what, I'm seeing is, what I've seen in the past is you really run into that problem more so it becomes worse when you have a downturn in the economy where you have a subdivision that's built and then construction stops and then you do have a really extended period of time. Um, nowadays it doesn't seem to take that long and developers are a little more careful with what they record. They do smaller phases and get that on the ground and built versus doing 50 to 100 at a time like you used to see 15, 20 years ago. Um, so there is that potential there, but at this point, I, I think we're, we're seeing it improve somewhat. And which school is this going to impact? Somebody said a few minutes ago. Northwest. 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 Yeah. Right there at it. <coughs> Thanks for coming back, Barry. All right, no problem. <laughs> yep. Thank you. All right. Then we'll have county manager comments, board of commissioner comments, and we do need a closed session for what reason? to consult with uh, your attorneys to uh, have the attorney-client privilege and to discuss the competence and performance of county uh, offices and employees. There's a motion to go to closed session. Mm -hmm. Motion number four, any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand.